The key to F1 success is strategy. The days of going all out to win are long gone. And now that tire wear is so important in races, drivers and teams must be far more astute. Everyone enjoys an overtake, but the deciding moments of a race often come from the pit wall rather than the cockpit. Similarly to how a football manager and his backroom staff use research, analysis, and strategy to determine the success of the players, an F1 team strategist do the same for an F1 driver. So, why does a Formula One team require a strategy? Unless the race is completely wet, drivers must make at least one pit stop. Those are the rules, just to spice things up and keep cars from running in a train. Cars also used to stop to refuel in the past. The first time this happened was in the 1957 German Grand Prix, when Juan Manuel Fangio did it as a one-off, but nobody did it again until Brabham tried it in 1982. They demonstrated that driving light so the car could go faster and then stopping for fuel and new tires was an effective tactic. It became popular with other teams before being banned in 1984. It was brought back 10 years later when everyone decided it needed to spice things up. Huge safety precautions were put in place, but it occasionally went wrong. Most notably, when Max Verstappen's father, Jos, was engulfed in flames at Hockenheim. Refueling was prohibited once more in 2010, but in order to maintain the popular strategy element, the rulemakers decided to require teams to use two different types of tires during the race. Different tire types performed differently, with softer tires providing more grip but wearing down faster, and degradation, or deg, is central to the team's strategy. But what factors influence a team's strategy? The choice of race strategy is based on extensive research and data analysis, both predetermined and race day dependent. Weeks prior to the race, the strategists will collect data on variables such as the time it takes to enter and exit the pit lane, the average expected pit stop time, the likelihood of a safety car, and the effect of a safety car. They use this, along with predictions of their own car speed and deck and that of their competitors, to develop the baseline strategy for that particular race. Practice sessions at the track provide real-time data of tire performance. Teams collect data on the deck for each tire type, again, for themselves and their competitors and use it to refine their simulations. Tire wear is influenced not only by tire type and temperature, but also by vehicle weight. As a race progresses, fuel is expended and the car becomes lighter, reducing the impact of tire wear. All of this must be considered. Finally, the position for which a driver qualifies, as well as accurate weather predictions, will all play a role in determining the best plan. So how do teams decide which strategy to use? All of the predetermined and real-time data is fed into a computer program, which adjusts the variables to calculate the quickest time in which the driver should be able to complete the specified number of race laps. This forecast takes into account the impact of traffic. It predicts when a driver will be delayed by other cars and predicts the best time to pit in order to avoid being held up for too long while also returning in a clear gap. The simulation generates the best plan A strategy, including which lap to stop on and what lap times the driver should run at. Teams will also have a plan B alternative in place in case the first does not go as planned. However, the plan strategy is only a starting point because things rarely go as planned, not only within the team, but also with the opposition. One of the most important aspects of the strategy is the pit stop out lap, which must be made to ensure that a driver returns to the track with as much space as possible, rather than being thrown into a battle in the middle of the pack. On the pit wall, in the garage, and even back at base, the strategy team is constantly monitoring the pace and position of the other cars and running live simulations to predict how the strategy options are changing. Teams may use the weather to their advantage, delaying a pit stop in case it rains and they need to pit again. They may also react in response to a safety car, which slows the field and allows cars to pit and lose less time. Perhaps the most important aspect of strategy is monitoring where the gaps are, how they're changing, and adapting to take advantage of or avoid other cars. This is where the undercut and overcut come into play. The undercut and overcut. Nobody reveals their hand until the last possible moment. But as soon as a competitor pits, the team must decide whether to change their strategy to respond to that move or stick to their original plan. If a driver becomes stuck behind a competitor, the team may decide to do an undercut. This is when a driver pits earlier in the hope of setting a few faster laps on new tires in order to be ahead of the other driver when he stops. As a result, getting out in clean air is critical. Similarly, if a competitor pits and there is still good performance in the tires, a team may choose to use an overcut. In this case, the driver stays out and pushes for a few laps, hoping to pull ahead of their rival once they pit. When these moves are made, 
teams constantly calculate and predict their cars and their opponent's speeds. Despite all of this insight and knowledge, a driver clipping a curb, a mechanic fumbling a wheel nut, or a few drops of rain falling at the wrong time can turn the race on its head in an instant. But don't think that the team is prepared for this. As soon as an issue arises, the simulation computers will be whirring with new scenarios, figuring out how to make the most of the current situation. Many races have been won or lost as a result of strategy, and it is still an important part of being able to compete at the highest level. Some of the biggest upsets in the sport's history have been made possible by clever strategy decisions, as well as a dash of luck thrown in. If you've ever wondered how a midfield team can sometimes sneak a podium or victory while appearing to be off the pace, strategy is the answer. Take a trip down memory lane to 2003 for a great example of that exact thing happening. Giancarlo Fisichella qualified 8th for the 2003 Brazilian Grand Prix at Interlagos and maintained that position under the deployment of the safety car on the first lap. Jordan's performance was noticeably better than the first two races of the season, which is why Fisichella argued against the counterintuitive instruction to pit during the safety car period. However, this unconventional move was made with a specific goal in mind. The race was held in wet conditions and proved to be a crash fest, with Gary Anderson, director of race and test engineering, devising a daring plan. An early pit stop under the safety car allowed the car to be refueled so that it can complete 75% of the race distance without stopping, the point at which, in the event of a red flag, the race would not be restarted. As a result, Fisichella pitted at the end of lap 7. Fisichella passed McLaren's Kimi Raikkonen for the lead into the Senna S on lap 54, proving the strategy was successful. Then, after losing control of his Jaguar on a wet patch, Mark Webber crashed, shedding a wheel that Fernando Alonso's Renault collected. As a result, a red flag was raised. Initially, Raikkonen was declared the winner, but six days later, the FIA corrected a timing counterback error and declared Fisichella the winner. The pit wall strategist correctly predicted the nature of the race. Taking into account the weather as well as the previous precedent to make a prediction like that with a bit of luck, turn a midfield car into a race winner. And that's the magic of F1 strategy. Subscribe, stay fast, and I'll see you on the next video.